here was the first case in which you had a movement toward communism, which was replaced by a movement toward free markets. It didn't work. A year later, inflation was 375% per year, the highest in the world. So in March 1975, Arnold Harberger and Milton Friedman flew into Santiago. He used a phrase that had never before been used in a real-world economic crisis. He called for shock treatment. He said that he was like a doctor that was going to help a country that was suffering an epidemic, and he was simply prescribing the medicine. Friedman wrote that General Pinochet was sympathetically attracted to the idea of a shock treatment, but was clearly distressed at the temporary unemployment it might cause. It rapidly became clear that Friedman's economic policies benefited the wealthy at the expense of the poor. It was calculated that a family trying to live on the average wage had to spend 74% of its income on bread. Items such as bus fares or milk became luxuries, and Pinochet got rid of free milk in school, a move that echoed the controversial policy of the young education minister in Britain, who would later become his friend. In order to enforce these economic policies, there had to be an enemy to fear. Tampoco creo que se haya triunfado totalmente sobre el marxismo. El marxismo es como un fantasma. Cuesta mucho tomarlo. Mejor dicho, no se puede tomar. Friedman and Harberger argued that free market economics went hand in hand with freedom and democracy. But in Chile, where their ideas were being implemented within the context of a military dictatorship, the opposite was true. Many in Latin America saw a direct connection between the economic shocks that impoverished millions of people and the epidemic of torture inflicted on those who believed in a different kind of society. One of those was Orlando Letelier. Letelier had been Allende's ambassador in Washington. He spent a year in one of Pinochet's prisons before being exiled back to America. In 1976, Letelier wrote, the economic plan has had to be enforced, and in the Chilean context, that could only be done by the killing of thousands the establishment of concentration camps all over the country and the jailing of more than 100,000 persons in three years. Less than a month later, Letelier was killed by a car bomb. Good evening, a powerful bomb today tore through a car as it was driving along Washington's usually quiet Embassy Row. The Chilean was Orlando Letelier, who also had been foreign minister during the last months of the late Salvador Allende's Marxist regime. Richard Roth reports. Michael Townley, a member of Pinochet's secret police, was behind the bombing. He'd entered the U.S. on a false passport with the knowledge of the CIA. Michael, buenas noches. Buenas noches, Pablo. La opinión del Poder Judicial chileno, ¿hay confianza en él? Mire, yo confío plenamente en la, en la justicia chilena como patriota y luchador antimarxista y juntista por sobre todas las cosas. Despite his confidence, Townley was extradited to the U.S. and convicted of Letelier's murder. Pinochet ruled Chile as a military dictator for 17 years. But in a frank interview, Harberger remained in denial. You cannot have a repressive government for long within a genuinely free economic system. Boy, 
In the same year as Orlando Letelier's murder, Milton Friedman was awarded the Nobel Prize for Economics. I don't, you know, you people have such a distorted idea of what went on. Let me tell you some facts. Number one, I was offered two honorary degrees by universities in Chile before I went down. I refused to take them because those universities were being supported in part by public funds and I did not want to appear in any way to provide any support to the political system in Chile. I'm not a representative of Chile. I'm not an advisor to Chile. I have no commitments to the government of Chile. I now turn to you, Professor Milton Friedman. I am very sorry for this incident. It could have been worse. 